We are coming, I'm coming to you today from 1 Samuel chapter 17. I would encourage you all to go back and read the entire chapter of 17 when you get a chance. But we all know the story of David and Goliath. What do you all think about when you think about David and Goliath? What's the first thing that rocks in your mind? Slingshot. Slingshot. Anybody else? What's the first thing you think of? A shiver at the thought. A what? A shiver at the thought of David. You shudder? Shiver. Shiver. Okay. Someone says shiver. He shivers at the thought. Anybody else? What do you think about when you think about that story of David and Goliath? Underdog. Underdog. <coughs> Anybody else? Giant. Giant. There we go. Giant. Giant. Everybody say fighting the giant. Fighting the giant. Fighting the giant. That is your word for today. Fighting the giant. Like I said, go back and look at the whole chapter of 17, 1 Samuel 17. But I'm going to start at verse 25. I'm going to read it from the NIV, so I'm just going to close my Bible. I'm going to leave it right there, but I'm going to read it from the NIV. Now the Israelites had been saying, do you see how this man keeps coming out? He comes out to defy Israel. The king will give great wealth to the man who kills him. He will also give him his daughter in marriage and will exempt his family from taxes in Israel. Y'all, this giant obviously was causing a lot of havoc. The king was going to pay the person that killed Goliath, exempt him from taxes. When have you ever known the government to exempt somebody from taxes and give his daughter in marriage? Amen. <laughs> David asked the men standing near him, what will be done for the man who kills this Philistine and removes this disgrace from Israel? Who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? They repeated to him what they had been saying and told him. This is what will be done for the man who kills him. When Eliab, David's oldest brother, heard him speaking with the men, he burned with anger at him and asked, Why have you come down here? And with whom did you leave those few sheep in the wilderness? In other words, get back off that ten of them sheep. You over here dealing with wrong folks again, so don't make over there doing what we're supposed to do. <laughs> I know how conceited you are and how wicked your heart is. You came down only to watch the battle. Now, what I have done, said David, can't I even speak? He then turned away to someone else and brought up the same matter. And the men answered him as before. What David said was overheard and reported to Saul, and Saul sent for him. David said to Saul, let no one lose heart on account of this Philistine. Your servant will go and fight him. Saul replied, you are not able to go out. <laughs> you are not able to go out against this Philistine and fight him. You are only a young man, and he has been a warrior from his youth. But David said to Saul, your servant has been keeping his father's sheep. When a lion or a bear came and carried off a sheep from the flock, I went after it, struck it, and rescued the sheep from its mouth. Your servant has killed both the lion and the bear. Everybody say, kill both the lion and the bear. This uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them because he has defied the armies of the living God. 
This is the word of God for the people of God. Let the saints of God say amen. 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 Everybody say fighting the giant. How many of you in here today feel like you are fighting a giant in your life? It's something going on in your life that is so big, it's so colossal, it's so gigantic. You're trying to figure out how you're going to get that giant to get down on the ground and die. How you're going to get rid of that situation. Anybody in here got any giants in their life right now? We all have some type of giant. There are different types of the lives. We have a Goliath that could be situational. That means that you're going through a situation that's uncomfortable to you. It's uncomfortable to your spirit. It's uncomfortable to your emotions. It's uncomfortable to your body. Some of us have health Goliaths. We are a little bit broken down in our bodies. There's some stuff that needs to be mended. There's some stuff that needs to be fixed. Some stuff that needs to be restored. But it's something that gives you a little ache in your body and you want that thing to go away. Some people are dealing with financial delights. You've been doing everything that you think you could do to get your finances restored, but things just don't seem to be going the way that you want them to go. You may be dealing with a delight on your job because you have been doing what you thought was the best thing on your job, but you just can't seem to get ahead. Some people are dealing with the Goliath of not even having a job, but they're believing that that giant is going to be struck down and they're going to be blessed with what it is that they want to manifest. Some people are even dealing with relationship Goliaths. You in a situation, I shall we say like Jada Pinkett Smith said, you were in an entanglement and you know it's not the best entanglement, but you're there dealing with it the best that you can, but God has already shown you how to get that giant out of your life. How many of you in here today are dealing with the Goliath? Amen. All of us at some point either have a Goliath in our life right now, or we had one in the past, amen. <laughs> or you keep on living, you will have one in the future. Why is it that this story resonates to us right now in 2022 about David and Goliath? This is a story that we are told when we were kids about this little old boy that went out against this huge giant and he uses a slingshot and a rock and he takes down this big giant. That's what we remember from childhood. Because that's a story that's told to us. But when we get a little older, when we live, and we've had some bumps and bruises, and we've taken some tumbles and some falls, we realize that that David was really us. We're David. Because we're dealing with stuff in life that seems so colossal, it's equivalent to the life. Maybe I'm just talking to myself today. I know that I have a colossal giant right now, and it's called the VA administration because I can't seem to get anybody to answer the telephone or do what I need them to do. They always out to lunch. Don't never call a sister back. Don't respond to the emails. And when I show up, they ain't even on the VA campus. That right there, right now, is my colossal giant in my life. Yeah. Trying to get people to just do what they get paid to do. Yeah. But... I digress on that, and I just say, thank you, Lord. I know you've already worked it out in my favor and in my dad's favor. Amen. What we need to look at today, what I want you to take away today is that you may not have a Goliath right now, but when that Goliath comes into your life, how are you going to deal with that Goliath? What is it that you need in you like David had in him to help him fight that Goliath. See, when David went out, he was in the monks. Obviously, he was younger than his brothers. He was younger than the other men. This giant had tormented Israel for 40 days. Everybody say 40 days. 40 days. This giant was killing men left and right. No one could stand against this giant. To the point where the king even said, if somebody can take this thing down, I'm going to pay you, I'm going to exempt you from taxes, and then I'm going to bless you with my daughter. I hope she was pregnant. <laughs> he
he wanted this situation to be taken care of. Because what Goliath was doing was he was bringing shame upon Israel. Now, let's go to the New Testament. Think about the New Testament for a minute. Let's think about Jesus. Because, you know, Jesus is not in the Old Testament in, like, physical form. You know that, right? You know what I'm saying, Paige? Okay. Jesus comes out in the New Testament. He's alive. He's there. He's in heaven with God the Father. Okay? In the New Testament, whenever Jesus wanted us to pay attention to something, or should we say his disciples, when he wanted them to pay attention to something, he would say it twice. Surely, surely, I say to you. Okay? What he was saying was, you need to listen to what's coming after this, surely, surely. Okay? In the Old Testament, if you look right here in 1 Samuel 17, in verses 26 and 36, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? David asked this question twice in that same chapter. Who is this uncircumcised Philistine? Now, I want to make sure we all on the same page and understand what the circumcision meant in the Old Testament. See, the Israelites, the Jews, they circumcised their boys on the eighth day. That circumcision was symbolic of covenant. It let everybody know that you are under the covering of God. That was a significant act. So see why David was, as they want to say, eavesdropping or ear hustling in the wrong folks' business. <laughs> what David was doing was, he was like, I believe I can take this giant down. I know I can take it down because I took down the lion and I took down the bear. You all underestimate me because you're looking at my age. You're looking at my size. You're looking at my lack of experience, so you think. But what David knew, he had something on the inside of him that only came from above, not from his biological father, not from his mother, not the DNA of the flesh, but it came from the almighty God up in heaven. See, David was looking at a situation that seemed like it was an impossible situation to everybody else. But in his eyes, he knew that he had faith in a God that was going to equip him with what he needed to take down that giant. Y'all not hearing me today. Some of y'all right now walking around and you dealing with the same old stuff that you were dealing with a year ago, five years ago, ten years ago. The same giant has been tormenting your life for 40 years and you're trying to figure out why has God forsaken me? Why has God not taken this giant out of my life? that God can't do it. What God is wanting is for you to have faith and for you to step out there and make the first move. Because if you look in the Old Testament, God didn't move in a supernatural way until man moved in a natural way. Let's look at what he did when Moses parted the Red Sea. Moses had to stretch out that staff, right? For that Red Sea to part. Let's take it to the New Testament. Before Lazarus was raised from the dead, he asked them to remove the stone from the tomb before he raised Lazarus from the dead. What God wants you to do is to take a step in the natural because you should be looking at your situation from a supernatural perspective, from a spiritual perspective. But we start from a physical perspective when the giants come in our lives. That Philistine was nine feet tall. And six inches. That right there was an NBA coach's dream. <laughs> that was a tall man, y'all. <laughs> Big man. They say the armor that he wore was a hundred pounds. Just the armor. But see, when David stepped out there and he looked at that giant, he didn't focus on the giant. He looked down. And he said, who is this uncircumcised Philistine that should defy <laughs> the armies of the living God? Amen. See, they and those Israelites obviously were circumcised, which meant that they were under the covenant of God. See, sometimes you can be under the covenant, but you're not in the covenant. That's why Goliath was able to take down so many of those armies, so many men out of that army. See, I'm going to give you the example. 
You have an umbrella in your car. How many of y'all here have an umbrella in your car? I got one too. If you walk out in the rain and you have the umbrella in your hand and you don't open it up, is it going to protect you from the rain? No. no. You have to open it up and get under it in order to be protected from the rain. See, these Israelite men may have been under the covenant, but they really were not in the covenant with God, meaning they were not in alignment in their spiritual lives with what God was trying to tell them to do. See, David was in alignment with God. That's why he could go out there with the boldness at his young age, with the boldness in his young body, with the boldness of his immaturity, as they thought when it came to warfare, and go fight a nine-foot-six giant. David knew that he was not going to look at the physical attributes of the life. He was going to look at it from a spiritual perspective. That's why he noted that Goliath was not circumcised. It's given to us twice, verse 26 and verse 36, that this giant was uncircumcised, meaning that he was not under the covenant of the Most High. So what did that say to David? David said, I'm not going to look at that nine, six foot statue, um, giant. I'm not going to be intimidated by his stature. I am getting ready to look and realize that I am under the covenant of God and through God and by God. That's the only way I'm going to be able to take this giant out. So David stepped out there. I'm, I'm imagining that David was probably about five, five. We don't know how tall he was, I'm sure. But I know he was short compared to nine foot six. He was a little bit of something. And he stood out there with the holiness and the faith in God. And he slung those rocks through that slingshot. And he took the light down. How many of you today are in alignment with God? Is your spirit aligned with what you say? See, God wants you to be in his covenant as well as under his covenant. See, we get under his covenant when we accept Jesus Christ as our personal Lord and Savior. But you can be under it, but you're still not really in it because you're not doing what you want to do. See, like I keep telling y'all, we love to do what we like to do. See, and feel so good sometimes that we cannot even just turn away from you. You better learn how to run. There's some stuff you just can't do anymore when you become a child of God. Amen. I want to hang out with my sorority sisters in a few weeks, but I know I can't spend the night with them. I can't because they're going to be doing some stuff that I don't do. It's no sense to me even going there. I'm going to go show my face and go to the children's hospital and bless the children with, with our presence. But I can't be part of the after party because I don't live that kind of lifestyle anymore. See, we want to be in the in crowd, but yet we want to be in the in crowd of God. But you can't serve man and you cannot serve God at the same time. You got to choose which one you're going to serve, which one you're going to be aligned with. Because when we align ourselves with the world, we find ourselves worried about the things of the world. As my hair is done, did I, do I have the newest car? Do I have the newest shoes? Do I have this? Do I have that? Can I get this? Can I go there? All of these things don't matter in the grand scheme of things. Because I'm here to tell you, if you serve God Almighty, all these things will be added to you. But your intentions have to be right. You have to be aligned with God. What God wants from us is to be able to walk by faith. Not talk. He wants us to move by faith, but not be not by faith. He wants us to live by faith, but not be little by faith. Some of that city and some of y'all lady. What God wants is for you to be aligned with every aspect of your life with Him. It's not a sometime thing. It's an all the time thing. He wants you to be aligned in every aspect of your life. That means that you have to have faith with everything. You can't trust God with one thing, but then you don't want to trust him with something else. You have to fully trust him in every single thing. How many of you want to take down the giants in your life? You want to see that thing fall. I'm going to tell you what happened to the life. We already know how the story ends. <laughs> what I want you to take away, like, 
everybody remembers something different about that story before we start. But what I want you to remember right now is that if you are truly a child of God, you're under the covenant of God. But are you in the covenant of God? I want to make sure that you're in covenant, that you're in relationship. That you're not in a situation ship, that you're not in an entanglement, that you are truly aligned with God. Because I'm telling y'all, there's some stuff coming. You're not in alignment, you're not gonna make it. It's gonna get rough. It's gonna get real rough. But if you're in alignment, you'll be okay. It's a personal thing. It's a personal relationship. It's a personal step that you have to take in order to get there. Bridget can't do it for you. Your husband, your wife, your significant other, your family, your mom, your dad, nobody on the job, no friend, no one can do it for you but you. I know some things may not make you feel good, and sometimes we, we just want to feel good. Who doesn't want to feel good? Who doesn't want the pleasures of life, the fun of life? It's only for a short period of time. But what we do while we're here matters because it will determine where you spend eternity. If you're driving down the road and you see a sign that says, the bridge is out. Are you going to try to go across that big gap? Or are you going to turn around? <laughs> now, my dad was out that fool that tried to jump, and I tried to speed real fast and jump on that hole. <laughs> I'm going to tell you, I've been a car, so I told him. <laughs> I was a bad girl. My dad used to always say, you need to be a race car driver. <laughs> and I told him, I said, you should have gave your 65 Mustang with that race car engine in it. <laughs> but when you have good sense, when you've grown up a little bit, you've matured. You're not going to try to jump that bridge when you have a sign right there that says that the bridge is out. You're going to turn around and go another way. It's the same with our lives. Why are you trying to go across that hole, that gap in the road? And you know you're not going to make it. And all you have to do is just turn around and go a different direction. I talk with so many people. Some I don't even know, never know. And they call me and they, they want advice. They want some encouragement. And I say, but you keep doing the same thing over and over again, expecting a different result. Medically, that's the definition of insanity. Spiritually, you just being disobedient and rebellious. Now it's time to get in alignment with God. It's time for us to truly be and get back to what it is that we know we should be doing. Power on. And the only way we're going to do that is to be in alignment with God. Amen? Amen. There may be somebody here or somebody on the conference line. You know you're not in alignment. You are dealing with some stuff in your life that's so heavy, that's so big. It seems like it's never going to disappear. I'm telling you, you can't do it on your own. I don't care what it is. It could be love, money, job, relationship, whatever it is, you know? It doesn't matter what, what type of giant you're facing. What matters is your perspective. Are you looking at that giant from a physical perspective? 